Okay, so at this point, I'll pause quickly before we go into that of David, the rise and fall of David, if there's any question by those who are online. Is there any question from, we have done from Samuel up to this point, uh, from early, we started from early up to this point. If you have any question, please unmute your mic and ask the question. Yes, from early up to, uh, up to Saul, is there anyone with a question or a clarification that you want to, you want, please unmute your mic and ask the question. Anyone with a question at this point before we continue with that of Samuel up to that of Solomon, uh, from David to Solomon. Is there any question? Yes. Is there anyone with a question? Also for Daniel, Kabina Safo. Yes, do you have a question? Also for Daniel, Kabina Safo, do you have a question? Okay, your mic is muted now. Okay, so if there are no questions, then we continue with this lesson. So, then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made so king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Someone said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. So when the Lord gave that message to Samuel, he also went straight to David. As I said, David Saul had disobeyed God on two occasions, and therefore God was not ready to let him continue as the king. Then the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. So straightforward, God had rejected Saul. And therefore, even though he was a king, another person was to be made to be anointed. So David was anointed and we all know the story how it all started when Samuel got to Jesse's um, compound Samuel asked for the sons of Jesse and then they were presented one after the other and as they were presented we get to know that Samuel being human as we are thought that one of them would be king because of their structure and the way they look but the Lord rejected them until all of them had been presented. Then he asked, are all these children, are all the children? Then Jesse remembered that there's one little boy who is taking care of the sheep. So he was called and that was David. He came and he was anointed in the presence of his father and that of his brothers. In fact, in the presence of his family. Sometimes it's nice you are being chosen in the presence of your family because let them see that you are now being set apart for a special use. That is why doing commission and doing ordination is very important that your family comes in to see that you are no more just an ordinary person. You are being set apart, consecrated for a different work. Even cat kisses are consecrated. So that is the reason why we do some of these things. So David, as we know, after the anointing could not play the harp to control the evil spirit in Saul. So occasionally he was being moved from the field to the palace to play the music, the harp, and that led the evil spirit that was tormenting Saul because the spirit of the Lord had what departed from Saul. And so David came in to play to control it. We get to know that when David grew, David, um, sons were born to David at Hebron. 
and we'll talk about the two um, sides because David ruled at Hebron and later ruled in Jerusalem. So we'll look at the sons that were born to him at one set and at the other set. When he was in Hebron, his first son was what Ammon and uh, Ahinoam of Jizra uh, uh, was the mother. His second son, Chileb, and this child, Chileb, Chileb, was someone that we have still been looking for, even though there are um, more information about him. What we get to know that some say that he was even a secular, some say that he was a cripple or whatever, because if you look at the rest of the things, he seems not to be falling in line. He was missing along the line. And so these were the sons that were brought to him. Um, we have Absalom, we have Adonijah, um, all were born to David during that time at Jerusalem. Sons and daughters were also born to David. We, we have um, Jotan, Solomon, Iba, uh, Elishab. All of these sons were born and they have been put together in a very nice order when you come to all these children and their parents or their mothers have been put together in this form for us to have a simple thing. So we have the house of David. David was from the tribe of Judah, according to 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. So David was from the tribe of Judah. We get to know that Simon got uh, married to Rahab, the harlot. And then we know Rahab in the days of who? Um, Joshua. Yes, when they have to go to the Jericho, the walls of Jericho, we all remember uh, uh, Rahab. Now, together, they gave birth to Boaz. Boaz got to Ruth, the Moabite. Remember Ruth and Naomi where Naomi had to um, coach Ruth to go to Boaz and lie be, be, um, below Boaz and later Boaz took uh, Ruth as wife. So the two of them gave birth to Obed and Obed gave birth to Jesse, who was the father of David. So David's grandfather is Obed. We get to know that Jesse, together with David's mother, who, who is unknown. We don't know the actual name of David's mother. If someone has done a research and knows the name of David's mother, you can bring it out. But David's mother has not really come up over a long period. There was also another wife of Jesse that we also don't seem to know, but they also have another trend coming down. But we are so much concerned about this trend of Jesse because that is where we have David in here. David was not alone. There were other sons or let's say siblings to Jesse, we get to know there were more of them. So the other children of Jesse are here, listed here. But David together also had 10 concubines. David had 10 concubines and then eight wives. So together we get to know that David had how many women? Um, let's say, okay, put together will give us what? 18. No wonder Neba Solomon did better than him by increasing the number. But David had eight wives, married wives, plus 10 concubines. So we get, thank you, Anna. Uh, David's mother is what? Neat, vet. can we get the Bible verse to support it? Yes, Anna, please give us a Bible verse to support the name. Um, is it Nidve, Nizivet? Nizivet, David's mother. Someone has given us help that with David's mother, Nizivet. Thank you, Anne. Anna. Please kindly give us the Bible verse for us to read to support the claim. Because these things might come in our objectives. And we need to get it 
So let's look at David. These are the two, the wives of David and Haggit. We have Abigail, Ahinoam. We have Igla, Mika, who was the barren, the daughter of Saul. We have Ab Abit, uh, Abita. We have Bathsheba. And we have Marka. Now, we get to know that this generation is also being created here because of someone called Absalom. We'll see where he ran away to. So these wives of David gave birth to um, Haggit, gave birth to Adonijah, and that was the fourth born of David. According to 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 20 to 25, we have Abigail giving birth to a son called Daniel, Abinoam giving birth to Ammon, who was the first son of David, and he was killed by Absalom because he raped Tama, who was the sister of Absalom. So Ammon raped the, the half-sister, Tama. We also get to know Adonita was executed because um, he made a request for Ab um, Abisag, who was given to David during David's old age, Abisag who was given to David during David O's old age. And that is why he was killed. And Adonijah made a request for that lady, for him to marry her. So Solomon made way of him, his own brother. This one, Ammon raped Terma because he found Terma to be beautiful. And instead of going to ask for Terma's hand in marriage, he took a diabolic view of raping her. And because David didn't do anything to Ammon, who was the first son, Adonijah, a Absalom, Absalom, yes, who was the son of Maka, decided what to kill him because the sister was Thelma, so decided to kill him. So we have the sons of David listed up here. Solomon is somewhere here. We get to know that when you go through the new age of Solomon, that is where we have Joseph. Nathan, who was also a son of Bathsheba, was a descendant of what Mary. Joseph also came from the descendants of what Solomon. So Mary and Joseph were all descendants of who? Bathsheba, the lady, the wife of Uriah, who was killed and taken by David. And that's where Jesus came in. So Rehoboam also came from Solomon. We have this here. Micah, as I said, born Adonijah, who had to go into exile for four years, came back and then had to fight his own father for the throne. And then he was executed by Joab, who was what the army commander, this Joab, David's army general, executed Absalom because of the uprise, the coup that he organized against his own father. Thelma was the sister of Absalom, and she was raped by his own half-brother, who was the firstborn of David, the firstborn of David, Ammon. So Thelma was raped by his own half-brother, um, Ammon. So the rest of the team is to give us the other wife of David, how it all grew up. And then we'll get to know how Abisai was given to David at a point in time. Joab was David's army commander. And then Asaha was called by Abdna. We'll get to know that when we get into the story, the various stories that we are yet to look at. So this gives us the summary of the tribe of David, of the sons of David, the family of David. We also get to know that some of the things David did. Popularly, we get to know David killing Goliath at a point in time when Israel went into battle. And then they had stayed there with the, they were battling against the Philistines. Now, David's father sent him to send food to his brothers because they had been in a battle for, for long. Fortunately, unfortunately, when David got there, he overheard Goliath coming out to speak against the God of Israel. And Saul and the army were hiding because Goliath was a giant. They were afraid. David, being inquisitive, asked his brothers who the man was. And when they are told him, he said, oh, he can fight him. 
the fact it was too funny because looking at Tiny David going to fight Goliath, he didn't know anything, so they couldn't even believe him. But what happened? David decided to fight him. He was brought before Saul that he said he would fight Goliath. When Saul put his own armor on David, he couldn't even move. Therefore, the armor was taken from him. And then David said he could fight Goliath. Dave so told him, if you can fight, I'm even ready to divide the whole kingdom. I'm even ready to give you whatever you want. And David said, I'll fight him. He went to uh, Goliath to the field with what? With a catapult, what we say, tie, tie in our local language, or the tie in a good Goliath. Sometimes he looked like, as Goliath said, am I a dog that you come before me with this? I'm here with a spear, with a sword, with a shield, with helmet, with the rest of the ammunition, and you are coming to me with a tie and a stone, five stones. But David said that you are speaking against the God of Israel. And that God that he has given me victory, whilst I was in the bush, when the bear and the lions come to attack the sheep, he gives me strength to open them. I killed them barehanded. That God who put me, who put you under my feet today and give victory to his own people, Israel. And what happened? David took the stone into the tie and then in the magic way, God responded, made it to hit at the forehead of Goliath, there was a hole at the, at the helmet there that pierced through straight into the forehead there. And then Goliath fell. David rushed, took the sword, cut off his head, and the people of the Philistines started to run because the main leader had been killed in the battle. And the Israelites were given victory. So that is how David won it. And Saul started envying David. Because at the point in time, David fought so but many battles for Saul. And Saul at this point started envying David because the woman was, was sing the praise song for David. Hey, Saul has killed thousands. David has killed 10,000. And I always say that we have to fear women. Just like said, Don said, we should fear delegate, fear women. They can make and or make you. So David <laughs> was being praised and Saul could not stand it. And so the envy started. Because he has been ruling and David is now being praised. But unknown to Saul, David had been anointed as the next person to take over from him. He wasn't aware. So the attack on David started. He decided to throw a spear against David at a point in time when David was playing the harp for him, for the evil spirit to leave him. At a point in time, table were set for him to come and eat. And David needed to run. Jonathan was the one who was supposed to help him. And then David had to run away. When the, Jonathan was, it was agreed, when he threw out the arrow, and then he asked that the dog is supposed to chase it, David is supposed to run. And that's what happened. And that made a covenant between David and Jonathan that he will remember his, that kind of friendship forever, even when he becomes king. David was being Tortured by Saul. So many occasions, Saul decided to change after David. Saul slept at a point in time, and David forgave him, even though he had opportunity to kill him. Went to the cave where he was sleeping, cut his robe, and decided to call him later when he woke up to let him know that God placed you under my feet. But because you have been anointed by God, I decided not to touch you. That's not my anointed, David go. When David was later made king, after the death of Saul, David one day decided not to go into battle when the army was in battle. And whilst he was standing on top of his roof, saw a young lady bathing. And that young lady was Peshiba. And she was the wife of one of David's soldiers called Uriah. David called her into the palace, had sex with her, and then decided that uh, because she was afraid she might get pregnant, called the husband from battle and then thought that he could, you know, make the husband go home 
and by so doing, you will have sex with the wife. And so maybe even if there's a pregnancy, then it will be that it was U.S. pregnancy. But you know, the law at the time of the Israelites is that when in battle, and even by one or the other, you come home, you are not, you are not even supposed to have sex in battle, being a soldier, because it will rather bring defeat to the so to the your other colleagues, to the soldiers. So at this point, when Bessie, uh, when Uriah came back, and even David had to tell him to go and sleep with the wife, go home. Because he was afraid that when he goes home, he will sleep with the wife, decided not to go home. And when David learned, learned that Bathsheba didn't, uh, didn't go home, he decided to give him a note to send to the commander. And who was that? Joab. And you get to know that it's so painful that Uriah was holding his own death warrant without knowing that he was holding his death warrant. Took it to Joab that he was supposed to place at the forefront of the battle, and therefore he died there. Then David took this lady, Bathsheba, as the wife. Nathan the prophet came to rebuke David for that act. That yes, you, someone is having so many sheep, but decided to go for another person's one sheep. What will you do? David said, ah, we have to bring judgment. Talking plenty, it's not right before God. And he said, you are the one. So you can see the hand pointing at you, 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 David, you are the one. You are the one who has done that. You, you have a lot of women. And I thought you were having seven wives. So why do you have to go for Bathsheba, someone's wife again? Even you had 10 concubines. What again do you need? Even if you want more wives, you can have them. But you took someone's one wife. So you are the one. And the law says the child that Bathsheba is carrying will die. However, the throne will be given to the son of Bathsheba. So that is where the prophecy of Solomon taking over the throne started from. The throne will be given to the son of Bathsheba. However, your children, your family will have no peace because it's going, there's going to be confusion in your family because of what you have done. So let's get to note it. The prophecy or the promise or whatever for Solomon to become a king was as, as, as a punishment to David's immoral lifestyle with who? Bathsheba. David, we get to read in Psalm 51, verse 1 to 4, David decided to go before God. And then he prayed, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgression. Wash me tolerate from my iniquities and clean me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. You can continue reading it. And David was sorry for what he has done. And so the Lord said that even though you have sinned, I'll not take all the kingdom from you. I'll still let you rule. However, I will punish you. You will not have peace in your home, in your family. Later, we get to know Mephibosheth. As I mentioned, Jonathan's son, when David took over the reign, decided to reward this gentleman. Because when he became, whilst he was king, he realized that um, he had promised Jonathan that he would let the descendants stay. Mephibosheth was a cripple. And then he was invited to stay in the king's palace. He stayed there, eat from the king's table, all his generation, and even the lands that belonged to Saul were all given to Mephibosheth to take over. It's my prayer that we will also be remembered by people for our good things, for promises they have made to us that we also enjoy some more. So this one is just the family tree. Most of the major activities that happened to the children of David as a result of the punishment. Ammon raped his house in Statelma, found in 2 Samuel chapter 13. And because David didn't do anything to Ammon, left him alone as if nothing had happened. And therefore, 
Absalom decided to kill Amon when he organized a feast for all the children of the king and decided to kill him as a punishment for raping his sister. Note that Absalom and Tema were from the same mother and same father. So they were from the same mother and father over here. Micah was their mother. So they were from the same mother and father. So Absalom took revenge for the sin against his sister. Later, Absalom ran away from David because when he killed Ammon, he was afraid that he'll be punished. So he ran away. When he came back later, four years, he was, he decided to look at the hoop, loopholes in his father's kingdom. When the father gave judgment, he would try to find ways, other means, where he would let the, the guilty party feel bad, feel like he is on his side. And therefore, at a point in time, the people started liking Absalom. And because of the like, the like of these people, he decided to cause a coup. He got some people to support him, Abiata and the rest to support him. And then what happened? Decided to chase his father out of the palace. And during the battle, whilst he was chasing the father, they were also running away. And at a point in time, he was caught in between these, the branches of a tree. And therefore, whilst he was caught in there, he was also being, uh, uh, Joab was informed, and then he went to strike him the dead at that point. So Absalom also died when he was being killed by Joab, who was the army commander of David, when he revolted against his father. So let's look at summary of David's reign. He was anointed to be king by Samuel, and therefore have to rise to the throne through difficult times because there was someone there before you are coming. So his reign, he has to really go through a series of difficulty before he was making. He has to live as a refuge in the land of the Philistines. He has to run away at a point in time. The house of Judah anointed him after the death of the Saul as their king, according to 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. So he was first made king over Judah and he ruled for seven and a half years. He ruled for seven and a half years as a king of Judah. However, the other tribe of Israel made the son of Saul, Isboset, their king for two years. So if you remember when we go to the sons of Saul, and then we said four of them died with him in the battle. And three of his sons died with him. I told you that the remaining one was this gentleman, Isbose, who was made king. As for Saul, so Saul's children with his wife, the concubine children, we didn't know much about them, what happened, but they were mentioned. But as for these three, they died, and this one stayed. So he was made king over the other tribe of Israel for two years. He reigned for two years. Well, uh, David reigned in Judah for seven and a half years. Later, all Israel recognized David as their king. After his possession was killed, after he was being killed, the, people, the rest of the kingdom were made with that king. So they came to be with David later on. David made Jerusalem um, his capital. And then we get to know that he conquered Jerusalem from the Jubicides. Jubicide people, he took it from them. The Jubicides, he defeated them for Jerusalem. And then he made that place the capital. David ruled a total of 40 years. Seven and a half years at Hebron and 33 years over all of Israel. So even if you look at his 740.5 years, he was made king, he ruled for 40 years. Let's look at achievements of David. Politically, these are the things that David did in politics or politically. 
And at David's rule, the Lord prospered the nation. We get to know that he prospered the nation when they defeated all their enemies. In fact, the whole kingdom was expanded during David's reign. They defeated all their arch rivals. He was able to move even, even into where they had natural resources like iron, gold, and copper. He conquered all the areas. And therefore, it was during David's time that the people of Israel were able to cover the whole land that the Lord had given to Abraham. They covered they covered every place. So the boundaries, they marked them in Genesis chapter 15. All that the Lord has told Abraham that you give it to them, David can get all the land for Israel. He was a man of war and he, said, uh, he shed much blood. So politically, he was able to expand the kingdom of Israel. Spiritually, one, David returned the ark to Jerusalem. So the ark that was seized, you remember when we said, we talk about the ark being seized during the time of Eli, the ark was returned from the house of Obed, Obed Edom. The ark now came back to Jerusalem. According to First Chronicles chapter 15, he did not fail to acknowledge God as the one who guaranteed Israel victory and had made them prosperous. He made sure that he recognized God as acknowledge him as the one who have made them so. Now, he also secured Mount Moria as the location for the house, as the location for the house of God, where he wanted to build the, to build the glory of God. But the Lord did not allow him because his hand was full of blood. So even though he was not building, he made a place for the building of the temple. He also made preparation for the construction of the temple. Everything was set. Even the selection of officials, according to 1 Chronicles chapter, 20, chapter 22 and chapter 28 and chapter 29. When you read the 1 Chronicle account, chapter 22, chapter 28, chapter 29, you get to know that everything was set for the temple by David. He also made promised, he was also promised the eternal kingdom the Messianic kingdom by God. Even though he sent, he did a lot of things, but he was after God's own heart. So God promised him that his knowledge will bring forth the Messiah. However, there were weaknesses in David's life. According to, we get some of these things from 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 20. And these weaknesses are usually classified as the remote causes for the divided kingdom. Sometimes also are writing the TTS exams. These two things, achievements of David, and then the weakness of David are things that we have to take note of. And this is the same as the remote causes for the divided kingdom by David. So if you see the remote causes by, the, um, by David for the divided kingdom, this is it. He committed adultery with Bathsheba, murdered Uriah, her husband, which brought confusion and on who to take over the throne as, after his death. So because of what he has done, he brought confusion in his own family. Sin in the family leading to the death of Ammon and Absalom because he failed to discipline his children. So David couldn't discipline his own children and he brought up sin. He practiced polygamy. As I said, he had how many wives? Eight wives, 10 concubines making 18. So at a point in time, most of the marriage were for political gains. He married the Micah, the daughters of Saul, and then Micah, the daughter of Tima, who was the king of Gush, uh, the Gisho. And so these are some of the things that David did he at a point went off. So during his last days, he prepared Solomon to take over the leadership. He ruled Israel for 40 years. As I said, 33 for over Israel and seven for Judah. Even though as he remained king after God's honor, 
He repented from his sins. And then he made sure that there was someone to take over. He died at age 70. So this is the little about David. Little about David. Do we have any question, those online? Do we have any question up to this time from anyone? You can unmute your mic and ask a question. Do we have any question? Question time, please, before we move on. Because we'll be ending at Solomon where the kingdom was divided. We are talking about the United Kingdom. Yes, any question? Also for dark or bright? Any question? Also for dark? Okay. Also for Terry Steven, any question? Papa, thank you. Now, are we getting it? Is it going well for us? Yes, please. It's going well. Okay. It's also really for, understood. Wonderful. Also for Philip, Ander. Is it Ando? Also for Philip, Ando. Any question? Yes. Papa Philip? Okay. So we continue with that of Solomon. Now, we find Solomon's reign from 1 Kings chapter 1 to chapter 11, which was last sitting. Those who wrote the TTS January this year, that was the focus for the prepare the Old Testament, the B, session B. And we did a tutorial thing for them. First Kings chapter one to chapter 11. This year, it is moving from chapter 12 to chapter 20. Yes, so we'll look at it thoroughly for the TTS. And then we also find it in second Chronicles chapter one to chapter nine. So Solomon inherited the throne of his father, David, as a divine heir, as I said, it was a punishment for what David had done. So divinely, he was to take over Although I don't need another son of David, enlisted the support of Joab, the commander, and Abita, the priest at Jerusalem, to have himself anointed as king. Now, the apple of Nathan, so even though Solomon was made a king, we have Adonijah, who had the support of Joab, who was the army commander, and Abita, who was the priest at uh, Jerusalem supporting him to be made king. However, Nathan and Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, came into the picture to change the whole course. What happened? When Nathan got to know that Adonijah was going to make himself king, he decided to talk to Bathsheba, to go over to King David and to tell David that yes, he had promised that he was going to make his son Solomon the next king. And therefore, he has to go by his word because Adonijah was going to anoint himself as king. Mind you, at this point, David was an old man, was in his old age. And then a lady by name, Abiasa, had been given to David as a way to warm his bed, even though David never had sexual intercourse with her. So we have to note it. It's very important. Those men who have been going for Nyinga, trying to quote that verse to support their, their, their evil action, to say that even David was old, they gave Abisag to her to warm his bed. Nothing happened. Um, let's shame them for their wrong mindset. But David was at his old age. And therefore, they decided to take advantage of Adonija. So Solomon, Mother, Bathsheba, went to David. And the agreement is 